Welcome to Factorio, based in the book. My name is Nila Osa, and we are at episode 20 of our Let's Play. You can see that nuclear bomb or atomic bomb is getting started. Is that really what we want? Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. There's a lot of other things, but this is, anything beyond is just there. So we're really rounding off the, the normal non-infinite science. And today I will be, well, obviously we will be taking our little new Spidertron out for a spin just to see how it's faring out there against uh, what the biters have to offer. They're not really very big, these biters. They're not even uh, at behemoth biters yet because, well, we, we've been working decently fast, keeping pollution under control, you know, that kind of thing. So they are going to absolutely melt against this. And I like the way that this works. It's going at a pretty decent rate. It, the movement speed is pretty good and it can repair itself if needed. So basically at this point you can just go, you should be able to just walk through these. Let's try it, just, just a casual walk through. Oh, it slowed down a bit, but still, I think it's gonna be fine. It'll take some damage, yeah. Yep, some damage, but not much. And again, just walk through. And here's a... Is that an expansion or an attack force? I think it's an attack It's an attack force. That's a dead attack force. And we can also probably just walk straight through this one. Uh, it's getting kind of slow here, but I think we'll, we'll make it. See, at this point, it's just doesn't really matter how much power... It, oh, there we go. It did actually take all of it. So, oh, I lost one robot, did I? Yeah, I lost one robot that sort of went out, but it repairs itself as it goes. So this is, uh, that's super easy. Now, what do we want to do in this episode? Well, I want to make some landfill. And where do we have landfill? We want to make sure that it's gonna be, this space has to be symmetric and nice and all that stuff. So we need to pave all of this area with landfill here so that we can place the solar panels there. This one is not being used, so this one also gets to be landfilled. There we go. It's not like, I think this is gonna be like 10,000 landfill in total, not too much. And from here, then we'll start working on the solar panels. I don't know if this is worthwhile scrolling up. Yep, that one, boom, oops. Oh, that's, uh, that's another thing. I will now officially kill all trees within my border. What is that, 17,000? Go away, robots. Get work done. That's good. Then we can do some design work while the Spidertron is out and about. There was one thing in the previous episode that I mentioned about blue belts. Now, I was kind of concerned, thinking like, hey, I'm going to upgrade to blue belts, but I actually don't think I want to. And the reason why I don't want to upgrade to blue belts is because I want this base to be able to launch rocket and then make a base in a book blueprint for you that is not using blue belts because if you if you want like a complete base, then building a complete base, stamping it down with red belt, red belts only is just going to be so much easier for you to manage and build instead of me assuming that you have twenty thousand uh, blue belts already built. So I think I want to make sure that we do not make any. We want to build the base with red belts only until we have launched rockets. And once we have rocket launchers, then we can go in and say, hey. Now it's the time to upgrade. Also, I'm going to be very only doing very sparing updates on uh, on like uh, modules Mark Three, so they will only be used like really in in specific locations where it's. Oops, I don't really like that one overlay generally. So that's the reason why I'm not going to do that. So we'll be completing with red belts and majority of uh, of these blue. I actually think, to be perfectly honest. I don't think I want this one to be to be a yellow belt, yellow assemblers here. There is no reason to waste yellow assemblers on this. This one, I don't know. It's not, no, it's not. I'm actually deliberately downgrading so that the only things we want to have upgraded is stuff like these two here and this part here. Don't think I want anything else upgraded to yellow assemblers at this moment in time. Not even stuff like this. Uh, oh yeah, another one, blue belt, blue. 
Absolutely, I want that. Absolutely. Right, so the next thing we want to do uh, while the Spider-Ton is out, out there, I'll take a look at Rocket Parts. And this one I absolutely do not like. I wish I had a better solution, but I don't. But let's uh, focus on something else in the meantime. Uh, this one I think will be placed here. This is going to be raw rocket fuel. Should be pretty simple. I'm going to build something like this. That one. All of this is coming in. And I'm going to get like a power pole to do that so it gets connected. And that also allows us to get here and just make sure that we have a small inventory of this. Don't need much. And as always, oh, actually, oh, I think I'd rather have it like this there. And here, that one, that one, that one. This one will be light oil, so let's figure out where the light oil is. Light oil is here. Boom. Don't even need that. And that will just get started immediately. Is this a good place? It's not a great place, but it's, I guess it's okay. Yeah. Not a great place indeed. What if I take this and glip it? Oh, that doesn't do any make any difference. That's gonna be even worse. I'm gonna do that one. Yeah, is that, that's probably correct. And here, here, here. I have no idea which one it is. Oh, it's this one. <clears throat> and it has to be, this one has to be the top. This one has to be the middle. I mean, when I'm, I'm eventually gonna bring it in here. And I want the load structure top, the rocket control in the middle and rocket control units at the bottom. It just works better that way. And where is, where is our oil coming? Oil is coming here. So that will go, and it's only going to go up there. That one. That was super easy. Let's go out to our Spidertron and see how you're doing. We can actually just clear out some of the stuff that's in our pollution range, and that will give us just a bit of a quietness here. Is it working? Yep, working. Uh, how's our... Just basically, if you just wait a bit, then... The, what is it called? Shields are coming back. Yep. And shields are coming back. Just This is way better, just walking along the edge of it, but sometimes I don't bother. If it's just a small one like this, you just walk straight through it and be done with it like this. Pew, 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 pew. Because they're not really going to make a dent. Nope. And continue downwards. That looks like we're actually almost out of things in our pollution range. I think I'm going to take this one out, just that one, and then move down here and clear this part out as uh, as we go along. It also serves as a bit of exploration, not much, but a bit. All right, we're going to watch this here. So speed for Spidertron, I think that's super important because it allows you to avoid a lot of things and just maneuver quite handily. That one will just go straight through. This is actually our most attacked area and because it's also the most attacked area, it's gonna be more fragile as well. Let's, um, let's go here. We can then go back to here. Go back into this one and that's gonna be rocket parts. Now we're gonna go up to this one. This one I don't like. Like not at all like. Not at all. I think I'm going to build it like... Oops. Maybe like this. 
I think so. Let's build it like this. And then we'll get some rocket, or some... That one, and that one. Over on the side, we'll go here and here. And so far, That one, that one, and here. All right, that's pretty good, I think. Let's have a look at the spider run. We're gonna be going back and forth. Oh no, the one got away. There's one that got away. <clears throat> so this one is just clear, 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 clear. And there's a bit of fun over there that we will have to take care of. No, I thought of, I just, and this one, as long as they're in pollution, then that's uh, as much as they... Every time for for pollution they consume, the spawners, then they will generate biters, and that's what causes attacks. So if you have biters in pollution cloud, that means they are spawners in pollution clouds, then they will spawn uh, new biters. Uh, but the overall evolution is independent of uh, how much pollution is absorbed, but only dependent on the total pollution produced. So that's kind of, yeah, kind of kind of weird that you can't really just limit pollution by not affecting. No, you can't limit evolution by not affecting by pollution. That's not how it works, unfortunately. I would love that it would be like this, so you could that would mean more value to pollution management. All right, let's check a thing here. Check something out how much you got you got the uh, six oh that's not great yeah it's not great though we don't have enough bullet or uh, rockets we're starting to fire a bit slowly but maybe we can take this little thing here out this little thing let's go a bit closer just to to see what's going on we want to be staying pretty close so that um, we don't only fire at spawn biters okay now I need to go a bit out and go back in again Uh, let's get kind of getting a bit hot in here. And let's get up. Let's get up. There we go. We're out. And go out again. Basically, we'll just shave off a bit on the sides for each of these. Every round we go, go around here. You can see how much we've shaved off the last round. And it'll be more... Well, it'll be easier every time we go a cycle around here. Okay, go out a bit. We're still shooting, but I think we're starting to see like a slowdown of uh, shots fired. But maybe we'll have enough. <laughs> Except some at some point it'll just completely stop shooting and then it's bad times. Okay. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Oh, that slowdown is just absolutely atrocious. Looks like we're going to get it. There. Let's see how much we got left. 300, 400. Okay, that means we now basically don't really have anything still in pollution range. Especially down here, it's super nice. That one is still the kind of there. So let's go there and then uh, switch click it up to that location. This is going to be the resting location because that's the closest place. Right, so this is making rocket control units like that and go into some speed modules and the thing is I really don't want to have it this size I know it's it's actually that's this that's the weird part now maybe I do maybe I do want it this size I will build it this size and then just deal with it the thing is this is so expensive because it uses blue belts that are blue circuits that you really want to get modules in here immediately this one will be an absolute disaster because it's in here uh, that's not really a big deal because oops that can go up and then that can go sort of this way Like this. Uh, 
Oh, these belts. These belts. And then the blue. How are we going to get the blue? Well, blue is actually not a problem. If I'm allowed to put it there. The thing is, this is the last place we're going to ever get things out, so... We don't really need to figure out what other options there are. That one goes in here, merges in, and goes into these. I need to make sure that this is balanced. And before it gets balanced, I want to make sure that it also has one out here. For the soul, basically for the sole purpose of putting it into the Spidertrons. That's the only thing I would ever request this for. But hey, it's a thing. Uh, that one. There. Now the question becomes, could I... Can I do it like this? I think so. And then the blue one also goes up somewhere. So those are going to be my inputs. Please go into where we built the rocket silo shortly. Not sure I should have brought everything on the belt immediately. Actually, that's probably a good idea to have it cut here. Or maybe here. I don't know. Because I don't know if this is going to be the final position. Now we need to make a rocket launch. I'm actually just way too close to launching rockets here. Huh. That's weird. What about you? Are you done? Healthy? Good? Yep. Everything? You got everything? Okay. So I think I want to take it out here. Because now I need to clear this space. No, For no particular reason aside from, hey, it's a good thing to do that. And I am going to get, we are going to get clear out our inventory. Thank you very much. With all of these things, I don't think I'm, I don't know. I don't think I'll ever use this anymore. I know it wasn't very long that I used the, my my tank, but it's it's a phase basically. And one, two, three, four. That one goes in here. Good. <clears throat> so what do we need for launching a or making a silo? We definitely need that thing. Oh wow! Look at how close it is. It's nine one hundred ninety nine available, and boom, two hundred available. Boom. And then I don't think I need this anymore, but you know, whatever. We might as well. And now it's moved over to this location. And that's going to be concrete. It's going to be blue circuits and it's going to be steel. All right. So let's go to the hub to get some blue circuits. No, get some concrete. Sorry. I should have 1000 stuck in here. And then we get some steel. And some processing units. Steel should be pretty simple. We just stand here and consume it. Or run up and then consume it to consume faster. And that one should not be... Actually, that should not be there at all. It's just the thing. Look at this. Uh, there. 1,000. And then I just need 200 blue. Funny thing though, I have no room in my inventory. I guess we are done with the tank as well. Done. And now I have room for it. Uh, actually, these two never need to go into my inventory. And that means we can go up to grab the blue circuits. Oh, why is... Oh, sorry. Why is this one not... The copper not working? Oh, that's glorious. That means copper is now uh, being exhausted. That's what I really wanted to see. I mean, why am I so exci excited about that? Well, if the copper is uh, is exhausted, then... Oh, that's enough. Uh, if the copper is exhausted, 
then I need to expand the copper. And that means we've finally got to the point where we are scaling things up as I want to. This is good. We are getting the first one here. I think I'll build it on the inside. Let's build this one. These just go in. And I have like, I kind of have a way to make to make this that I think is good, but let's let's see about it. We'll wait for this one to go in. And we're also gonna need some more beacons. Okay, let me just try smashing it down somewhere. Since it's nine by nine, I think we'll do it like this. And then that one. Okay, so that means I can, I can move it like this. There, there. The maximum number you can have around this one is like this. That's the maximum you can have. And that's what we are sort of preparing for. I can't imagine that we need to do this because it requires quite a bit more than what we have. But it is what we want. Now, there is one thing that I'd like to get, and that's some copper. So we can get some copper wire and control the wiring here. And, ooh, I'm also gonna make like a weird thing that I'm sure that you wouldn't expect me to build. A power switch, and I'm handcrafting green circuits. How about that? How about handcrafting green circuits? Yeah. So the reason why I actually want to make a power switch for this particular thing is when I'm out or moving out here and setting up a location, and I want to make sure that I stop consuming stop launching rockets because maybe I want to focus more on building my uh, my modules. Then, uh, then I uh, then I can switch off a power setting from the map view. If you look here, you can change the map, the state of this one from the map view, but you can't change any other settings from a map view. You can copy paste settings or something, but it, it gives us a certain advantage. That one is out, that one's out, and this one's out, yeah. So the one going across is just kind of annoying. It's, it's not really hurtful or anything, hurtful. And that one. Now this one is an, its own little network that we can then switch off. And then it switches off all of this thing, except that one, because that's kind of irrelevant. But it'll switch off this. Now I don't think this is actually correct, because I like to have that one here, and then an input. Okay, let's just switch it on. It doesn't matter, we're not launching anything. This one always, always, always don't ever do anything in a rocket silo unless you have the three productivity modules here. Don't want to do that. Also this, not really needed. Um, okay. So there's definitely something here that I don't like. I think this one would be beneficial to prove one, two upwards. There. And then that's the one that gets killed. So we basically take two away from the maximum number we can have there. And that allows it to go in. I'm going to have some boring chests. One, two, three. I go here and here. This is all intentional. Here, I want 100 of each stored, not more than that. This one will make this satellite, satellite is going in here. That means I can get that one gets the rocket control, no, the low density structures, and this one gets the rocket fuel. This is exactly the reason why I did it like this, because I need 100 rocket low density, so I want this to be the closest, and I want the next one to be rocket control, so I can reach it here. And then the, no, sorry, not the rocket fuel, but the rocket control is the furthest down because I don't want it for anything. Now we need all the rest of the stuff coming in. Well, that's a lot of it is gonna be kind of easy. I am going to request the radar because that's 
I need one or five radars per something. It's completely trivial to request radars. So we'll just request five radars going in. And then what we're needing is the blue and the, these two combined. So I'm going to have one combined belt. Uh, this one and that one. Maybe. I'm going to figure out which one is the easiest to have where one is going to be blue circuits and the other one will be the mixed belt. The, the solar and there, yeah, here's the solar. Nope, that's not the solar. Solar comes all the way from down there. Oh, by the way, well, let's get ourselves distracted a bit. Hello, Spidertron. That's one big, oh, it's just a big worm. It's not a behemoth worm there. Because they're kind of easy. But we'll also uh, provoke the evolution quite a lot by doing this. Oops, get up there, get through this one. I will just do evolution. It's 89, so we are extremely close. Extremely close to seeing uh, green biters, which is actually what you would want, what you would expect, is that by the time you have the Spidertron, you're also going to get... Spidertron is the tool you want to fight uh, green biters, and they will be showing themselves really, really soon. Actually, it would be nice to just smash through this and then as a result see a few of the greens here and there or just a single green coming in they spawn at 90 uh, 90 evolution 90 percent evolution oh oh yeah i'm not actually controlling that one there we go and you go down here there's nothing about our defenses that really need to be upgraded as a result of behemoth biters the Nodder Wall is going to be somewhat fragile against against attacks. They will they will beat back one attack, maybe two attacks, but not more than that. And oh, that one actually needs to go as well. Uh, that means we need to also have the Spidertron, preferably having two Spidertrons, one for this area and one sort of for the rest of it. Uh, but we can do that. We have now an automated Spidertron builder. That's a lot of worms. That is not a lot of worms anymore. Very much no more worms. Cool. Let's go back to here. And that's the one. This one now needs to jump out. Let's hope that I have prepared the whole thing correctly. And that's the place. It's prepared. I love this part where um, I've, so long ago I whoops, made preparations and now the preparations are coming into fruition and just getting the whole thing working here. Love it. And that will go here. Jumping over and then go into, you know what, just, just do that. Yeah, and this one. The blue one goes in there and there. That's it. That is now officially everything. Everything we need to launch the first rocket. Here. This one's going in and I will need to again. Whoops. Oh, what? Why? Oh, it's because I'm holding iron plates. There you go. And... Funny how squeak through isn't working with that one. There. Not working. That's what I wanted to see. And this one working. Good. So... Ah, that's not really what I wanted here. That one. And... There we go. Anything in here? Anything in there? Nope. This one very, very, very slowly will progress. And I will make one more one more addition here. And that will be on the output. There'll be an output here. That will go all the way into merge with this one. Right? 
Yes. Look at the perfect nature of this. And that means it has to be on the top side of the belt. That means I'm going to get one out here. That's going to put on the top side of the belt. And that's going to put on the top side of the belt. So these two will now put on the top side of the belt. I will gather the content of these boxes, drag it over on the side here, and put it into the red inserter. So the red inserter will not go, it will not launch the rocket unless the amount of of yellow, uh, of white signs is less than, I don't know, let's say 200. What this means is this one is outputting and being consumed, but I don't want to launch rockets like all the time. The reason why I don't want to launch our rockets all the time is Oh, actually, I don't think I want. Uh, there's one. Uh, I don't want. To, uh, let's continue this one. I, I don't want to launch rockets all the time, because for two reasons. Well, it's a waste of materials going in here if I oversaturate this one. The second one is that if you fill up this one and it it can't export it, then it just and keeps launching. Then it just keeps deleting the uh, the space signs. That's kind of very expensive. It's very hypothetical in a normal little tiny base like this one where they just keep trickling in. But in a, in a big base or over a long time, you don't want to delete it. So what I'm doing here is saying, you can get the rocket ready, but you will not insert the satellite. Also, we'll have the auto launch with cargo enabled eventually. You will not do that until it's basically run out of storage in these locations. And that's going to be it for that one. Let's see. What about our Spidertron now? Where is the Spidertron? Spidertron is down there. And we can look at evolution again. Still only a 90. So we're not quite getting there. Uh, let's go to this one first. And these are working along. Uh, let's have a look at where the things, what are the things that are not working and just try to decipher it. So it's basically looking like copper is not keeping up and that's slowing down red circuits. It's probably also slowing green, but that's not as big of an issue. This one is weird. How can I, how can I take two lanes in and make, pretend that it's four lanes? That's weird. Is it even using anything up here? It must be using for something. Oh, these two are not great. I think I actually want to change this one. So they come from over here because this one is really used, used for anything at all. Let's take this. Oh, that's so close. That is so close to being okay. <laughs> Got to find somewhere else to get it. Can I get it? What about here? I'll keep that one for now. There. Steel is not going to be used for anything further up, so I can take this one. That one and that one. Good. Those are the last two places this is going to be needed, and that means... This one is kind of irrelevant at this point. All of this lane is completely irrelevant, but that's okay. It'll eventually fill up and then a bit more will be allocated to the red circuits or red signs. That's working and our Spidertron is also good. Uh, it can go out and clear the rest of it up north at some point, but the next kind of thing we want to do is definitely go around here. Our rockets are just absolutely atrocious uh, launching speed, but that's okay. Uh, the reason why we are stalling here is basically or mainly because of blue. So blue is, for example, still being poured in here. Yeah, it's still being poured in here for additional. That's really weird. 
Oh, wow. Oh, no. It's ten spider sounds? Are you insane? Put the spiders on there. That should stop the other ones from actually going. Okay, so that's a big waste. Ha! Well, okay, now that explains also kind of some of the overconsumption here and there. We are not going to launch the rocket this episode. I think that's a good thing to save for another episode, a dedicated episode. But it's it's getting there. It's at a magnificent 7%. That is how it is at this point because we are so focused on modules and the blue circuits. But what we want to do, and as we now have sort of the technology for the rocket silo, then we want to scale up on the on the copper as well, as well as probably also the stone. But now we're really nearing the point where I would say this is, oh, shoot, I forgot one thing. I wanted to do the solar panels this episode, like this one, like that one I wanted to do. Look at that. Look at that. Look at how happy I am doing all of this. There we go. There we go. Finish it, finish it up with a bit of robot abuse. That one I wanted because we that was kind of, I got that when I was saying, we're finishing up on the part where I would say that the base is pretty close to complete. I'm also going to build a, a, a third nuclear power plant, but maybe next time I'll be expanding out to the copper as well as sort of finishing up the design of what I would say this is a very, very standard base. So that if you want to build a mega base build, but you don't bother with all the the starter part, then you can take the blueprint probably from the end of next episode and just stamp it down all of it. And then you have, you basically just paint by numbers, paste all the red belts, and then you're good to go. But that's not uh, now, that's going to be in the next episode. So this one will be one of the big targets for the next episode, which will also unfortunately constrain our creation of, uh, of the uh, this one. But that's not really a big deal because it's already here. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed this, this series as much as I am. I really like the fact that after so many hours I of, of playing the game, we come to something that is extremely standardized. And that's really wonderful to, to see. I have a good idea still about how this is going to expand it. And it is going to be expanded to somewhat of a mega base, as much mega as you can do with the constraints of the belts and stuff like that. Anyway. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you do, you know what the like button is. Leave comments for good ideas, bad ideas, and other feedback. I'll see you guys next time. Take care. And as always, stay effective.